even Republican members of Congress and Fox News commentators publicly and privately condemn the attack. As one Republican senator said, Trump's behavior was embarrassing and humiliating for the country. As time has gone on, gone on, politics, fear, money, all have intervened. And now these MAGA voices who know the truth about Trump on January 6th have abandoned the truth and abandoned the democracy. They made their choice. Now the rest of us, Democrats, independents, mainstream Republicans, we have to make our choice. 2024 is set to be the biggest year for democracy ever. More than half the world's population, an estimated 4 billion people around the globe, will be headed to the polls. And the main question on every ballot is autocracy or democracy? Here in America, democracy must win. For if a twice impeached, four times indicted on 91 counts former president who's promised dictatorship, revenge, and retribution is elected to the White House again, then arguably the American experiment and democracy have failed. And joining me now, Congresswoman Madeleine Dean, former House impeachment manager and member of the House Judiciary Committee and Foreign Affairs Committee. Miles Taylor, former Department of Homeland Security Chief of Staff, host of the Whistleblower podcast and author of Blowback, A Warning to Save Democracy from the Next Trump. And Susan Del Percio, Republican strategist and MSNBC political analyst. Thank you all very much for coming to the show today. Congresswoman Dean, um, you were there on January 6th, the, this iconic picture of you walking out of the chamber in that gas mask. Um, your thoughts on this third anniversary? Well, thank you for having me. It's a delight to be with your other guests. Uh, it is staggering to me that it is three years later and we are still, we still don't have a good portion of the electorate who understands the truth that their very eyes showed them. And the reason for that is Republican leadership. Take a look at what's going on with the Republican leadership in the House. They have all taken a knee in fealty to Donald Trump, not in loyalty and in duty and in oath to the Constitution. So uh, I, I will say I am dismayed. I've been reflecting back uh, these past few days. What did it mean that we had this terrible tragedy happen to our country? But what's t more terrible, if it's possible, is that we didn't wake up, that every single mm -hmm. American didn't say, that's beyond the pale. That is dangerous. People got killed. People were beaten with Trump flags, Confederate flags, the American flag. Uh, I think about that day, how terrifying it was. I was afraid for myself, but as I sat in the safe room, I was much more afraid for our country. Mm -hmm. And the threats, uh, Congresswoman, as you well know, continue. Attorney General Merrick Garland talked about the growing threats against public servants yesterday. I, I want you to listen to some of what he said about that. Just yesterday. We arrested and charged an individual with threatening to kill a member of Congress and his children. This is just a small snapshot of a larger trend that has included threats of violence against those who administer our elections, ensure our safe travel, teach our children, report the news, represent their constituents, and keep our communities safe. These threats of violence are unacceptable. They threaten the fabric of our democracy. You know, Miles and Susan, I would love to get your thoughts on this, but Congresswomen, um, I would love to get your, th um, your thoughts on what the Attorney General said and the atmosphere that we're in right now. It's an unacceptable atmosphere. We have to turn it back. Uh, so many of my colleagues, myself included, have received threats over the past three years. Uh, I had to have a special detail for a period of time because of threats to me and to my family. Uh, other members, uh, the same. I, I, I would like to pivot to say what yesterday was, and I hope many people will watch uh, the speech by President Biden in my district at Montgomery County Community College after he had visited Valley Forge. He spoke forcefully. The gloves were off. The truth was on the table, quoting the former president in many and just a sampling of his despicable acts. 
and his truth telling that he will be a dictator on uh, day one, uh, that he wants revenge. He wants to wreak revenge on this mm -hmm. country. He is the most, the least qualified person ever to have become president. And what we have to do every day this year is to remind people that democracy is on the line. It is a fragile thing. I didn't realize it until January the 6th, how fragile it was. Mm -hmm. But it is not a given. It is not a fixed mark. It is up to us, every single one of us, to protect and to lift this democracy, to make it better, more inclusive. If we fail at that, none of the other issues we fight over will even matter because we won't be able to make those choices about inclusion, about voting rights, about women's rights, about educating our children or protecting our planet. If we fail at protecting democracy, we will lose all of those opportunities. And, and, and Miles, I would love to, to get your thoughts on the attorney general, but also your thoughts on, uh, and I'm glad the congresswoman brought this up, on President Biden's very powerful speech yesterday, kicking off his 2024 um, reelection campaign. Well, the two are closely connected, Jonathan, and I think the congresswoman really nailed it in pointing out how the threats of violence in our country are really putting the republic in danger and the president called it out and this is deeply personal for people who are in politics the congresswoman noted the threat she's faced i know that my other guest here susan del percio i'm sure she's faced threats after speaking out against donald trump I had a bodyguard and Secret Service agents told me to carry a concealed pistol and I had to fortify my home. That's the environment we are in. Now, Jonathan, after January 6th, I think a lot of us hoped that the trend lines would look better. But here we are three years later, and the truth is that threats to public officials are up. Trust in institutions is down. Attitudes towards political violence are up and confidence in democracy is down. So all of these trend lines, everything that should be up is down, everything that should be down is up. The problem here is if we continue down this path, our democracy could be turned upside down. And my worry is that this year, if we continue with Donald Trump as the prospective nominee for the Republican Party, we are likely to see greater violence with greater consequence mm. than we saw on January 6th. That is the worry, and I talk regularly to FBI officials who are tracking this threat. They are more worried now than they were certainly in 2016, 18, or 20. The light is indeed blinking red. Susan, your thoughts? <laughs> so many after uh, the two previous mm. guests. Um, one is uh, to Congresswoman <clears throat> Dean's point about leadership, Republican leadership. We don't have leadership in the Republican Party. We have lieutenant, Trump lieutenants, perhaps, but there is no leadership. There is no goal of moving ahead in any form of governance. Right now, the people in Washington, the MAGA Republicans, are only concerned about preserving their power base and supporting Donald Trump. That's not how a country can run. And when you look at what happened in on January 6th, and as horrific as it was, I think what was equally horrific weren't in the hours and days that followed, but in the weeks, months, and years that have mm -hmm. followed, that we, we have become worse. We, we, we've refused to believe as, you know, or there are those who believe refuse to believe what they saw. They look at this, that, that there are people out there led by Donald Trump who believe that, that the FBI was behind January 6th. They refuse to open up their eyes. And my bigger concern is that people get too turned off from hearing these narratives over and over, and that they should be mentioned in big days like today in big speeches like Biden did yesterday, originally meant for, for today, but mm -hmm. because of weather had to be changed. The speech that President Biden gave was so critical and at such a great critical time. It's kicking off the campaign season. And I think that we have to be careful on, you know, not pushing it every, we, we can br bring it up every day, but it can't always be the top narrative because I think people mm -hmm. get more dug in and more turned, more tuned out. Right. And that, yes, there's a place for it, 
but our country has moved on beyond January 6th, whether we like it or not. And we right, have to right. ensure that Biden is reelected in 2024. Yes, because democracy is at stake, but to get people to the polls, there's a lot of other things that need to happen. Right.